Hello everybody and welcome back to Broken Brian and let's talk about Black Myth Wukong again. Now it was just released and within the first 24 hours it has taken second place as the most concurrently streamed game on Steam for a single player game. Now this is a huge record. The top being uh, PUBG Battlegrounds, which is a racing game, which is 3.7. So they're about 1.2 million off from reaching, from passing and getting the number one spot. Now let's kind of break it down a bit. Now this number is based on the first hours of release, which means about 80% of this number was in Asia. 80% of the users and players were in Asia, and of course, this is a Chinese myth game. A lot of Chinese players, a lot of Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, a lot of these countries were playing this game the moment it released. And as time passed and became waking hours over here in the West, it, the number did drop to about 1.5 million. Now that's still a very significant number. And why is this? It's what, I don't even know if this effect has a name yet, but it probably should be. Probably should have won something, I don't know what we would call it, but basically it's the, the anti-woke model. Basically, hey, if when a game says, hey, we're not, we're not getting involved in DIE and all this other stuff, we're making a game the way we want to make it. And we're not bowing down to political or ideologies. We're making the game we want to make. It's successful. Just like with Harry Potter's Hogwarts Legacy. And it did. It was going to do good. But because of all the back push. Of, there's not, it's not inclusive enough. Which it was very inclusive. And there's not, there was no DIE. And they made that one trans character. And it did so good because somebody's like we're gonna boycott it because of jk rowling and all this and because of she's she's a turf and all that we're gonna boycott it and it did double people were out there buying multiple copies i bought two primarily one for me and one for my kids so they have it when they're here and one with their mom so they got to put they get to play it anytime they want because we're big harry potter fans in my family so it was definitely i was already going to buy two copies and a lot of people were like i'm buying copies and i'm handing it out to people there was a whole group they were just buying copies and giving them away to improve the game and this is that effect again they said we're not going to bow down to this ideology and it's doing gangbusters and it's I have to attribute to that because honestly before this before I started seeing the articles that were like oh they've rejected Sweet Baby Ink and other things like this never even heard of the game and honestly this isn't uh, I wasn't compelled to play this game I'm not I don't feel compelled to play this game it's like hey it looks cool it's just it's just not for me I mean this isn't not to say I wouldn't enjoy it, but I, I, I'm, I'm your typical person. I live on a budget, and I'm saving my money for a different game. And I thought about it. I was like, oh, maybe I'll buy it. Everyone's talking about it. Maybe it's really good. It's got 97% positive reviews. And that's incredible. I, I am not, I, I am considered buying it now, but not within the next month. Um... I will probably buy it when it goes on sale so I can play it and enjoy it. I've got another game lined up that I'm going to purchase at the end of the month. And I'm just, you know, I'm being wise with my money. But if, if I hadn't, if there wasn't a game coming out that I wanted to buy, I probably would have bought this game because it looks really good. It looks well done. It looks like fun. I've seen some people streaming some gameplay. It looks awesome. It's not something that's for everybody, but it is definitely succeeding because 
it rejects the crazy ideology of DIE and all this inclusivity. We're going to make a book. We're going to make a game about a book that was written centuries ago about Chinese mythology. And that does not include Western ideology and new Western philosophies that have come about in the past few years and things like that. Nope, we're going to make the game one. And it's successful. It's going to be more successful. This is what's happening. You say, oh, you can't do this. Which is kind of funny. I mean, I in China, I get it. You know, this is their mythology, their history. They want to play a game about it. But in America, I mean... In, I mean, it's kind of like we're fine just doing our own thing until the moment you tell us we can't do something, and then we want to do it. We really do. It's like, oh, you you can't have you can't have more than twelve guns. Now we need fifteen. You know, you shouldn't play you shouldn't play Hogwarts Legacy because J.K. Rowling doesn't support trans rights. Now I need five copies. You know, and it's this. You have to do this because they don't bow to us, which means, okay, I don't, I agree with Rowling and not doing DIE and all this other stuff. So, yeah, that sounds like it's a good product for me. And this is how we're going. This is, this is what happens. Uh, it's just, hey, looky here. Guess what? <gasps> It's successful. It's vastly successful. To hit a milestone like that within hours of release is remarkable. The numbers we don't have yet on sales, but I'm I'm very curious on what that would be. Uh, I may do one more video on this based on sales numbers and see how if, if it breaks any records on that front. But honestly, congrats, Black Myth Wukong. Congrats on having a successful game and creating a game that you wanted to with your vision without any outside influence, doing what you want to do and how you want to do it, to staying true to your creative instinct, your creative style, and your creative mind. Congrats on that. We applaud you and we look forward to what other, what other games you may have in store. And until next time, my friends, as always, I love you all, and there's nothing you can do about it.